going to have join us now Virginia Gibson and Norma Doggett. Come on up. to be in the number? And I said, yes, I'd like to be in the number. So he just kind of fitted it in. I don't know what you girls were going to be doing, but I took your place, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but I I, uh, I really thought it was such a charming number. And, and it is okay. truly amazing. Yeah. Ama yeah. And, and every time yeah. I, we, we see it, we must have seen it at least 10 it's times, like, and oh, it, yeah. it still grabs you, it still holds you there. Yeah. Speaking of switching places, wasn't there a switching place thing that happened? Uh, a switching place in the number? Yes. W was that with you? Yes. Would you like that? <laughs> yes. <Let's, laughs> yeah. Uh, I was hoping to save that for the last. <laughs> <laughs> this might be the last. <laughs> <laughs> I may have to start with an apology to Mrs. Kidd, Sheila. I may have given Michael a, a few gray hairs <laughs> because uh, during rehearsal I sprained my ankle and um, uh, everyone was extremely kind, Michael was kind and uh, I went through the process of healing and uh, that was rehearsal. Then we went to filming and he repla had replaced me with one of the other brides. He put her into my dance positions. During filming, she sprained her ankle in exactly the same spot. Perfect. Good then. But I kept up my practice on the side. Jumped in at the last minute and filmed all of my original dances. I think you would respect that. He was very nice. Um, how did you get the job? Well, my first show, Magdalena, um, opened at the Big Field, and um, a theatrical agent, Howard Hoyt, some of you might remember him, he came up to me after the show and he said, I'd like to represent you. And I said, oh no, I'm not ready. You know, I had to study my first time in New York. Five years later, five shows later, and I calculated about 9,000 classes <laughs> of ballet, jazz, modern, and voice. No acting yet. And uh, so, I ran into him on 57th Street in front of Carnegie Hall. I saw him getting into a cab, and I said, Mr. Hoyt, Mr. Hoyt, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, fine, bring me your pictures. And I was in Wish You Were Here at the time, and uh, Ruth Mitchell was our stage manager, and she was a photographer. So she took some pictures, and we gave them to him and he sent them out. Now, meanwhile, I had auditioned for Michael Kidd uh, for Can Can. And uh, I wanted a little part by now, something, you know, special. And uh, they offered me Gwen Verdon's understudy, but I was already understudying in Wish You Were Here. So I didn't take it, but he remembered me from that audition. And uh, they passed on me. So thank you, Michael. It was wonderful experience, excepting for that other thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, at the uh, end of all of that. So um, that's how I got it. 
I went out on a 10-week letter, and my only film, and I got to meet her. <laughs> Have you been, been friends? And you've Jenny been friends Gibson's for? Jenny has been my friend ever since. Yes. Wow. You stay close? Oh, yes. Great. She and befriended me. I was the only girl sent out from New York. I don't know if they were having a problem getting the seventh bride, or maybe they didn't want a big name or something, you know. But anyway, it worked out so beautifully for me. I'm so happy to have that. Well, Virginia, how did, how, what was the experience like for you? Was there anything special that happened? Well, um, I never knew anything about the picture until I went to class one day. And then I heard all the kids talking about they wanted to audition. So I went home and called my agent. I said, what about this picture? And he said, oh, that'll be the chorus. And I said, I don't think so. I said, I don't care. I'd rather do anything than sit here and wait for the phone to ring. So he said, well, OK. So they, they called Michael, and then somebody said I had to make up a dance. I said, oh, God. <laughs> so I, it, you know, a little uh, not too difficult dance. So I thought, well, that's all right. So I made it up, and I went in. And when I met Michael, uh, he said, oh, uh, I know who you are. He said, are you still going to class? I said, oh, yes. And I said, now, do I have to do that dance? No. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, uh, no, you know. I said, good, because I'm not a choreographer. <laughs> you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, the, the three of when, when all the brides were together, are there scenes with all of you in it? Uh -huh. So how much time did you all get to spend together? Well, not very much. No. No, not very much because and I, I have to digress for a minute. I just find, first of all, they brought almost all New York dancers in. Uh -huh. And I know this isn't a kind thing to say, but there is such a difference between California dancers and New York dancers. There is a camaraderie that you don't get any place else. And there is a love mm. and an understanding that only New York people, people not just dancers, New York people have. And I always envy that. I think my career was very strange. I started tap dancing on the radio at age two. <laughs> and, um, and singing little songs like Playmate and all of those kind of, those kind of beauty songs. And come, come on and play with, with me and bring your dolly sweet <laughs> and I'm down your apple tree. <laughs> I don't think you want to hear the whole thing. <laughs> I would if I could remember it. <laughs> but anyway, um, in going to Hollywood when I was 14, uh, my first movie, and someone reminded me that they had seen my first movie, which was Song of the Open Road. I, that was my screen test. I had never done on film. I had never acted. I'd only tap danced on the radio. And I was just <laughs> on the radio. But again, dancing was uh, singing. They always thought of me as a singer more so than a dancer. And I, I was one to be a dancer, but I had to think of myself as a singer. But uh, I forgot what I was getting, uh, getting around to. I just noticed there was such a difference in the, um, the attitude of a New York dancer than there was of a California, I guess I'd say a, a Western dancer. Let's call them a Western dancer. They're lovely people, but we didn't have the camaraderie that you all had. Yeah, and I don't know whether it was because of the distance of where everybody lived. They lived in the valley, they lived in Hollywood, they lived in LA, they lived wherever they could live. And we were just alone. There was no meeting place. And uh, I, uh, if there were so many dancing studios all over the area that there was no, there just wasn't that nucleus of everybody kind of knowing each other. And also, you know, it's, it's uh, the agents, well, agents, hello, they give you anyway, you know, they're always looking for something better. <laughs> and uh, I just never find that here. And I really do envy all of the camaraderie that you all have. And you can feel it here in a room tonight. It's just, just wonderful. Yeah.